Hello, thanks for joining us today. We are in conversation today with the editors from the English Journal and also the Secondary Section Steering Committee Chair. So I'll let everybody start off by introducing themselves. Hi, I'm Tiffany Rabine. I am the current chair of the Secondary Section Steering Committee, and I'm here today with Toby and Joseph, and we are really, really excited to have both an invitational conversation to write as well as an informational time to chat about the details of English Journal. So Toby, Joseph, I'll turn it over to you. Well, hi, I'm Toby Emmert, and I am one of the co-editors of English Journal. Uh, Joseph and I began our co-editorship uh, about a year and a half ago now, so we have one volume under our belts, and we're looking forward to our second volume, which begins right now in July. Hi, Secondary Section members. I'm Joseph Rodriguez, and with Toby, I'm a co-editor of English Journal. I'm thrilled that you're thinking about writing for English Journal, and I currently teach at California State University in Fresno, and we're always looking for teachers who write with their students and also to give us insights on um, their practices in the classroom and also across all literacies. Tiffany, you're the chair of the secondary section steering committee. Can you talk to us a little bit about what the secondary section is and how folks can be involved? Yeah, so all new members choose a section with which they, they are most affiliated. Uh, for instance, since I was a high school English teacher, the secondary section was automatically um, my home. And so while a lot of our time and conversation does center around convention, um, throughout the year, we're always looking for ways to engage our membership, include them, um, elevate their voices, which is one of the reasons why English Journal plays such an important role in, in the secondary section. So let's talk a little bit about English Journal for those folks who haven't um, seen it before. What is it? Where does it come from? And where are we going? So I can talk about that a little bit, Lisa. Uh, the journal has been around for a long time. It's considered the flagship journal of the organization because it's the first journal. Um, it is a practitioner's journal um, as opposed to a research journal. So all of the articles that we publish have a research base, but they're really um, speaking to teachers specifically about their classrooms and their students. And so there's a narrative voice to most of the articles and we are really interested in readability um, and also practicality. We want people to feel like they're getting ideas that they can take straight to their classroom. Um, the journal comes out six times a year. So it's, it's a journal that people get often. And uh, it's usually about 100 pages or so. And we have typically um, several sections. We have an introduction to the, that particular issue. The issues are often themed, and so it's possible that you would pick up an issue of the journal and you would find that most of the articles in the journal are talking to a certain theme. Um, there's also some room for articles that are of more general interest, but for a particular theme we usually have 10 articles and we usually have a couple of pieces that we call Speaking My Mind, uh, which are shorter, more personal essays. The journal also features a series of columns, and each of the columns is um, dedicated to a specific topic, and there are some guest editors um, who work on those columns. And then Joseph and I have a, a new feature for the journal. The last thing that appears in each issue of the journals that we're editing is a, a feature called Book Ended, which is written by a young adult author, um, usually about a specific experience that that person had when they were in high school English class. Here's a sample issue of English Journal, and we make every effort to feature cover art that's inviting, and also sometimes it's work that's produced by students in our secondary classrooms, middle and high schools. Uh, we're always seeking teacher voices. Um, Toby had mentioned Speaking My Mind, which invites teachers to really share their perspective on a specific concept or practice. And some of those articles are in um, either have our research base with references and others are completely based on experience of, of practice. Um, we're really drawn to voices from the classroom that include, we, we include student work such as photography, even photography by uh, teachers themselves, uh, poetry. Uh, we're seeking cartoons that um, reflect some stories about English language um, arts classrooms um, as Toby mentioned, uh, we have themed uh, issues uh, that reflect on a specific area of language arts. For instance, uh, recent themes have included reading conversations, teaching journeys, 
and also mentoring and models. Uh, most uh, issues in July uh, reflect general interest and we include a wide array of topics that are from the English language arts classroom, although we're always open to receiving um, general interest um, articles at any time. Uh, the columns that we have are have guest editors and as a result, they focus on specific themes. Uh, for instance, uh, we have some uh, column topics on gender identity, uh, some on some that reflect book reviews, global literacies, the experiences of pre-service teachers um, as they attempt to uh, are in their work to enter the classroom full time, reflections on teachers, kind of a, a dive inward, journeys inward. Um, it really helps for teachers to describe their journey as teachers and maybe this aha moment that can occur in our lives as we teach and learn. And uh, an additional uh, column is on teaching Shakespeare um, as a canonical author, but also today, what does that reflect um, the teaching of Shakespeare in the lives of today's adolescents and teachers in the classroom? That's fabulous. So if people want to be one of the 10 article authors for each issue. How do they go about doing that? As Joseph and I have both talked about a little bit, our editorship um, involves something pretty specific with regard to the themes. So the way that we've worked it out is we have six issues a year, five of those are theme-based issues. And so the first thing that a writer might want to do is to go and take a look to see what are the calls for upcoming themes. And if it makes sense to consider how you might write to one of those themes, because we're, first looking for pieces that somehow reflect the idea of that particular theme. So that would be a, a first good start. And then if there's, it might be helpful to think about what you might want to write about in terms of what kind of article it is. So you could write a Speaking My Mind piece, which Joseph just suggested to you is more of a personal piece. Those are really quite short. We're talking about 12 to 1500 words. Um, there are only a couple of pages in the journal and they can be uh, more personal narrative pieces, or if, you, if you've done some classroom research and the research is related to the theme, then you might think about how you could write that up um, as a piece for the, for the journal. Or maybe you would think, how does something that I'm working on look at specifically something that one of the column editors is the piece specifically to one of the editors. So the first thing to do is probably figure out whether you have something that's theme related and then decide which part of the journal is going to make good sense for whatever it is that you think you'd want to write about. Um, and then I would say the second thing is to, if you're, if you're not overly familiar with the journal, but it's not something you read a lot, is go read a few articles because that will really help you get a sense of the tone that writers usually um, adopt when they're writing for the journal. The journal does have a very specific kind of tone. As I mentioned earlier, it's, it's narrative, it's readable. We want people to feel like they're interested in the articles that we're, that we're publishing. That's a place to start. Joseph, would you add to that? I invite teachers to really examine the articles written by fellow colleagues, teachers from across the country, and even uh, the other parts of the journal, uh, specific you know, poems that have been published, photography, uh, across genres, um, to get an idea of, of tone, diction, uh, audience, and how teachers are able to um, create a narrative that really weaves their decision making in a classroom, their conversations with students, how they invite them um, in the study and, and the reading and study of literature, um, and also how they embed the voices of researchers um, in the field that's readable, that's understandable, uh, and that also could possibly be replicated in other classrooms across the country so that it's not, let's say, the article, uh, the research, the practitioner work, let's say, in an urban area or a high rural, low urban area, that um, these teaching approaches, methods are doable, you know, across settings, uh, across texts, across literacies. Um, and that have a connection to um, everyday language arts. I think I might add to that that there's a, the, so the first step would be to consider whether you have something that you're interested to write about and whether it's related to the theme. And then the second step might be to think about the question of, am I offering something that is 
fresh or new or has a new take on an old idea because the journal has been around for a long time and a lot has been written about. And so there are many, many ideas in teaching that are certainly laudable ideas, but we may have heard them before. They may have been written about in the journal. And so it might be useful to take a look at recent issues in particular and see if what you're writing about has been written about recently and published recently. And if it has, then you might want to think of a different angle that you could take on what it is that you're writing about, or you might want to think of a different story to tell. And, and I'd like to jump in as both a consumer and a contributor um, and, and how all of those, you know, the the tone, the readability aspects uh, really are able to be applied instantly in your classroom. You know, I've made copies of articles, handed them out. I have, I have, you know, copies of the journal in my office. Um, this one was from last fall. And, and the fact, you know, teachers are talking about, it's like, oh, I just read something about this. Let me get you that. And then, you know, like Toby said, teachers can literally kind of just go down the line and go, okay, this is how you confer with kids when you're trying to do this activity. And this is what it might sound like and look like. And so it, it really that readability piece and that able ability to apply really, really shines through with, with the items that are published. Yeah, that's so great. Definitely pick up a copy of English journal and, and take a look and you can read the articles online also. Um, Tiffany, I'm going to throw a question your way. Uh, how can folks get more involved in the, in the secondary section? So I know when, when people sign up to become a member, they, they choose their level. So let's say I, I select secondary, what then or, or what's next or what's possible? Yeah, I, I love that question because that is that has been a focus, um, really a, a purposeful focus the last year and a half. Um, one is, is touching basic convention. We tried to identify ourselves. Um, so, so don't be shy to come forward and, and introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and, and, and what your focus areas are. This year, we will intentionally be seeking people out at our get together, at our luncheon, um, because we're really excited about our speaker lineup and, and because we do want to carry that momentum throughout the year. Uh, we do want to find people who would be interested in tweeting with us or writing a blog. We have an Engage Now blog which you only need to contact um, the secondary email, which will be shared at the end of end of this. And, you know, we share lesson plans. It's very informal. Um, I, I kind of pre-screen and then we pass on that information. So that's an easy way to get involved with writing um, and, and very instantaneous. There's not as much leg time between your writing and your publication time. Um, and then, and then, like I said, we're going to be looking for people very intentionally who want to be involved throughout the year um both through social media and then you know kind of more written pieces that we can publish excellent so tiffany mentioned convention and things coming up in the future uh toby and joseph do you have uh things that you'd like to preview for us that are coming up in english journal what do you think joseph what shall we preview well we have a scheduled uh session uh, this is our second year that we'll be co-presenting with uh, voices from the middle uh, their editors, and we really invite teachers who are interested in writing for English Journal, Voices in the Middle, uh, to uh, meet with us to attend our session. Uh, we'll provide uh, talking points, specific uh, writing ideas, writing angles, and certain approaches that have led to publication for some of the authors uh, in writing for the journals. Um, I think a few tips that I would share for, for those considering writing for English Journal would be to really think about the storytelling narrative, uh, kind of a beginning, middle, and end for an article. Um, I've noticed that articles that have a really strong response by readers, they often begin with a vignette or a setting, student speaking, a teacher speaking, uh, possibly an excerpt or a line from a text, a novel, a poem that the students are reading. Uh, but it, the article takes off with, um, you know, references to research, but that teacher voice is constantly present and we're hearing uh, about the decisions the teacher is making, even doubts that uh, teachers are, that teachers possess as they teach. Uh, but yes, you're invited to our convention and there will also be, we also provide copies of English Journal and you can meet with us one-on-one uh, -on -one or in a group, in a pod, uh, to share writing ideas, uh, specific topics. And we also announce um, calls for manuscripts, uh, share a few planned themes 
that are unfolding in the weeks ahead or months ahead. Um, and I think there's a deadline that occurs um, in January. So that really motivates teachers uh, to write uh, over the holidays, winter break, and even through summer uh, when we share those themes. Yeah, that's, that's a really good session if you're interested in writing for any NCTE journal. Um, there are sessions that you can attend at the conference. One of them is called Meet the Editors. And that's a big session where there, the editors from all of the NCT journals are available for you to chat with. And also the folks from the, the book arm of NCTE, if you're interested in a book project, there are just a lot of people in that room that could be really helpful to you and provide a lot of good information. Um, if you're interested in, any, in writing for any of NCTE's journals, it's a good way to pitch ideas and to ask good questions. But the session that Joseph is talking about is specific to English Journal and Voices from the Middle. And so that would be a good place to come and learn specifically about writing for those journals, but also to have a chance to talk to other people who have written for the journals, because we, in, we tend to invite a couple of authors who published recently to be in that session with us so that people can talk to them about what their experience was like and going through the process. It's a pretty involved process. It usually takes several months. And especially if you're new to it, you might have a lot of questions. And that's just a good space to ask the kinds of logistical questions or um, ask people to address concerns that you might have before you get started if you're new to the process. I think uh, I also want to comment that authors who publish an English journal, they have a long history. The first issue of English Journal was published in 1912. Uh, so you're joining a, a journal that is over 107 years old and your voice is uh, well read, well studied and archived and not just by NCTE, but um, internationally and uh, well read. That's fabulous. Do folks have last words, last bits of advice? Go ahead, Joseph. What would you like to say? I believe that teachers want to write. And we who are editors, co-editors, proofreaders, uh, emerging writers, we always want to offer that invitation that teachers um, share their voice. And often that begins writing with our students. Um, other times it begins writing at convention with more teachers uh, side by side and we flank each other. Uh, attending sessions where writing is promoted, it's invitational, um, you know, it leads to many directions in our journey as writers and teachers, and also that there are venues to be considered for publication, uh, and that often involves um, keeping going, right, Co constantly keeping writing, and that initially when we're getting started, there may be rejection, but we are able to continue the journey as writers and especially bringing voice to our classrooms and making that more visible for a public that sometimes wonders what we do in language arts and also believes in what we do. And so this is an opportunity to write for English Journal. Yeah, I would like to jump in also um, that this idea that the teacher as writer um, and, and we see more and more avenues recently and and to encourage i just want to encourage teachers to take advantage of that um to raise their voice to understand that that they are the expert and and they do know what they're talking about and and people want to share and they want to hear what's going on and in the writing aspect for this journal in particular the support is is unending and so it is scary um but the people toby joseph everyone else behind the scenes um so supportive and you know, welcoming and, and really make it a really, really pleasant experience. I think the only thing that I might add is that, it, that tenacity really counts in this kind of endeavor. And if you're interested to write for the journal and you've never done so before, um, it is entirely possible that your first piece may not be the piece that gets published. And that's just the reality of publishing. And that's that's the reality of being a writer in general. Um, Joseph and I are really committed to um, having new voices in the journal and to, as Tiffany suggesting, trying to support folks who are interested to write for the journal. That's a, that's a commitment that we've made as editors. And so we invite people who are newbies to this kind of endeavor to give it a shot. Um, we're gonna try to be supportive of you. And also to understand that 
the first piece may not be the piece that gets published, but the second piece might be the piece that gets published because you learn an awful lot about the process as you move through it. And moving through the process is its own kind of education and it's a useful education. Um, and it, it's helpful for the second time. Whether you submit a second piece to English Journal or not, you'll be ready for submitting to someplace else, you know a lot more. Well, it's so great that the secondary section steering committee and English Journal um, are both there to work to elevate teacher voices. And I think that's, that's really important. So I want to thank you all for being part of this conversation today and giving us a little bit of a peek into what secondary section members can be involved in at NCTE. We will share contact information if folks watching have questions, want more information, or if they want to continue this conversation. If you're going to Baltimore to NCTE 19 in November, please look any of us up. We'd be glad to talk to you more about additional experiences. So thank you all very much, and we'll definitely be in touch.